These days it seems like every time you turn on your telly or browse the internet something bad has happened. Frightening political situations around the world, civil unrest, global pandemics, and EA's continued insistence on the inclusion of loot boxes in their games are more than enough to drive anyone up the wall. Suddenly, the dystopian societies featured in the likes of Fallout, Half-Life, and We Happy Few don't seem so far-fetched, and honestly, if we wanted to stress ourselves out about totalitarian governments and the threat of nuclear war, we'd just watch half an hour of Peppa Pig. What are you planning? During times like these, we need something colourful and cheery to distract from the abject bleakness of real life, and luckily, there's a whole load of titles out there that have us covered. So pour yourself a nice soothing cup of chamomile tea, pull on your comfiest jammies, and relax, because I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 wholesome games to play when the world gets you down. Number 10. Two Point Hospital There are very few things that can cheer you up quite like a big dose of nostalgia. For many of us, Theme Hospital was a mainstay of our childhoods, and spiritual successor Two Point Hospital takes us right back to those heady days sat in front of our Windows 98 PCs, curing bloaty head, heaped piles, and third-degree sideburns, all while listening to the Spice Girls and munching on turkey Twizzlers and crispy pancakes. Although there are minor differences between the two games, Two Point Hospital takes the spirit of its predecessor and makes it available to a modern audience. Start out by building a reception desk, GP's office, and pharmacy and slowly improve your hospital to cure all manner of ails while keeping an eye on your budget. It does get a little stressful at times if you fail to cure enough patients or struggle to balance your books, but the stress is far outweighed by the comforting familiarity and the sense of triumph you get after finally getting that all-important three-star rating. Just don't mind the ghosts, there'll be a janitor with a Henry along any minute to sort that out. Number 9. Slime Rancher if you'd have asked me back in 2015 where I saw myself in five years, I certainly wouldn't have predicted being, for all intents and purposes, under house arrest, hiding from the literal plague, and playing a game in which I moved to a distant planet to spend my days collecting, raising, and breeding little jellies. And yet here I am, and there Slime Rancher is, filling my life with vibrant colours and wibbly joy. Playing as Beatrix LeBeau, you leave your home on planet Earth to live on the far, far range and become a slime rancher, a career path which involves seeking out and gathering gelatinous organisms and feeding them until they produce… Uh, plorts. You then sell the plorts in order to purchase equipment and upgrades so that you can collect even more slimes, harvest even more plorts, and continue the cycle. The whole experience is tons of brightly coloured, goofy fun, and although it's at times a little repetitive, it is certain to put a smile on the face of even the most world-weary among us. You need only take one look into your slime's giddy little eyes, and I guarantee your heart will melt. Number 8. Peaceful Days I'm not sure why farming simulations lend themselves so well to warm, fuzzy feelings, but by god do they relax us in ways that no hot bath ever could, and hot baths that's the stuff right there. I love a hot bath. Released on Steam in early 2020, early access title Peaceful Days combines a farming sim with an RPG style of gameplay. The game is set in adorable Aurora Town, situated on the coast, and the player gets to build their own farm from scratch, which entails raising cute pixelated creatures, planting and harvesting crops, and upgrading your tools. You can even keep bees, go fishing, or just spend hours in the local mines looking for ore. In addition to this, you also work to become an important part of the community by making friends with your your new neighbours, attending the frequent festivals taking place throughout the year, and partaking of a few quests and minigames here and there to endear yourself to the locals. Overall, the game is incredibly charming, and the slow pace, pretty graphics, and whimsical feel make it the perfect title to load up after a long and stressful day. Number 7. Ooblets Do you ever sit at home nursing a hot cup of tea whilst society collapses around you and think, gee, it sure would have been cool if someone took all the best bits of Pokemon, Harvest Moon and Animal Crossing and combined them into one lovely little package? Well, fret no longer, dear viewer, because your overly specific wish has been granted by the wonderful people behind Ooblets. Developed by Glumberland, an American studio comprised of just two people, Ooblets boasts beautiful graphics, a gorgeous pastel colour palette, and a wonderfully inspiring futuristic funk soundtrack. 
The game allows players to create and customize their own character, fill their home with furniture, plant and tend to their crops, and most importantly, dance like no one's watching. Toss in a whole bunch of adorable little collectible creatures in a town full of friendly NPCs and you've got yourself one massive dose of wholesome. Although still early access at the time of recording, what we've enjoyed so far has given us more happy chemicals than a basket full of kittens, and for that reason, it is very much deserving of its spot on this list. Number 6. Cooking Mama Despite what Jamie Oliver would have you believe, cooking is stressful. Between weighing and measuring and trying to figure out the difference between coriander and cumin, not to mention all the washing up you're left with, there's an awful lot that can induce anxiety. Thankfully, there are ways and means of channeling your inner Gordon Ramsay without burning your kitchen to the ground, and the most wholesome of these is undoubtedly Cooking Mama. Despite the series having taken a bit of a questionable turn in recent years, with Cooking Mama Cookstar embroiled in a legal battle between the rights holder and the publisher, its earlier entries remain a fun and adorable way to develop your digital culinary expertise. Guided by Mama, players must prepare, cook, and serve cutesy cartoon meals within a given time limit and are then rated on their performance. Although Mama does fly into somewhat of a rage if you mess up, she does reassure players that she will fix things for them, so even if you burn your casserole, it's not the end of the world. And when you're done playing, grab yourself a glass of wine. You've been slaving over a hot stove all afternoon, and you deserve it. Number 5. Yonder The Cloud Catcher Chronicles if open-world games are your cup of tea but you've had such a stressful week down at the office that the thought of booting up Skyrim fills you with an overwhelming sense of existential dread, you might want to give Yonder the Cloud Catcher Chronicles a try. This visually stunning game is set on a lush island paradise and it is up to you, the player, to rid the land of the mysterious murk. But Ben, I thought you said this was a relaxing game, I can't handle the stress of being a hero right now! Fret not, friend, because the whole point of Yonder the Cloud Catcher Chronicles is that you take things slowly, and although there is a foe to overcome, the game is heavily focused on the spirit of adventure and discovery. So, while you can hot foot across the island to put an end to the evil murk, you can also just sit around on your bum fishing and crafting. Become a master chef or carpenter, solve puzzles, adopt endearing little creatures, or simply spend your hours exploring the eight different biomes, from snow-capped mountains to tropical sandy beaches, all at your own pace. This world is truly your oyster. Number 4. Viva Piñata if the thought of tending a dilapidated garden and filling it with a whole host of colourful, sentient party favours sounds like your idea of a good time, then boy oh boy are you going to enjoy Viva Piñata! This outstandingly upbeat title was released for the Xbox 360 in 2006, and at the time of recording it can still be downloaded from the Microsoft Store. Set on the sadly fictional and rather uncreatively named Piñata Island, players are given a neglected garden to tend, and must use a plethora of tools to give it the love and attention it deserves. As the garden is improved, it will attract piñatas to come and live in it, and these adorable little papier-mâché critters can even get their romance on and breed delightful little baby versions of themselves. Aww. If all that doesn't have you sold on the spirit-lifting capabilities of Viva Piñata, just sit back and have a listen to the theme tune for a few minutes because if there's one thing that will absolutely put you in a good mood, it's that catchy musical number. Or it'll drive you mad, one or the other. Number 3. Costume Quest Personally, I find the idea of trick-or-treating a little bit terrifying. Small children appearing at your door demanding sweets in return for not destroying your property or taking your kneecaps all sounds like a bit of an ochlocratic nightmare, but from the other side of the table, I suppose, it must be fun to don spooky costumes and receive a load of chocolate for your trouble. At the very least, people like me can get their halloween <laughs> Weenie. Enjoyment by playing Costume Quest. Pick out your hero and potter about the environment, taking on missions, expanding your party and collecting those all-important costumes. Complete enough of these tasks and you'll become powerful enough to transform into a champion and take down the evil-doing ne'er-do-wells, which, while challenging, is still highly enjoyable and doesn't detract from the overall wholesomeness of the title. Although set during spooky season, Costume Quest is funny and cute, and is a lovely title to get into when you want to feel the spirit of the holiday without having the life scared out of you. Oh wow, a full-size Twix, get in! Number 2. Animal Crossing New Horizons 
When all the world's gone to heck, there would be nothing nicer than jetting off to your own private island to live out your days gathering fruit and fishing for rare sea creatures. Unfortunately, the majority of us aren't Richard Branson and therefore can't afford our own Necker Island, so we have to make do with Animal Crossing New Horizons instead. Released in early 2020, Animal Crossing New Horizons was the shining beacon of positivity gamers needed in a year that, frankly, we'd all like to erase from our memory cards. Rip. You're jetted off to a desert island to start building a friendly little community, starting out with just a couple of residents to keep you company and slowly building until you have shops, a museum, and more adorable fuzzy neighbours than you could shake a fruit tree at. The whole point of New Horizons is to do things at a relaxed pace, and it takes weeks and weeks to progress, but that is the beauty of the thing. So boot up your Switch, put your feet up, and watch as those turnip prices go through the roof. Number 1. Stardew Valley Have you ever dreamed of owning your own farm, but the thought of getting up at 4 o'clock every morning and sticking your hands up cows' butts is a bit off-putting? I think that's what farming is. Well, fear not, my plucky young agrarian, because Stardew Valley has you covered. Available to play on basically every platform from Android to Xbox, this happy little farming sim allows players to grow crops, raise livestock, and even get married and have tiny farmer children, all without having to place their digits anywhere near a bovine backside. I told you, you're safe. Originally developed by one man, Eric Barone, aka Concerned Ape, as both an homage to Harvest Moon and a light bit of CV fodder to boost his employment prospects, Stardew Valley is now beloved by gamers the world over, and if you look at the whimsical gameplay and relaxed atmosphere, it's very easy to see why. Engage in a spot of fishing, whip up delicious dishes, or even go exploring local caves in search of crafting ingredients. The colourful little world is yours to fertilise. I could probably phrase that differently, but you get the point. You can even get your friends to join in the harvesting fun with the game's online multiplayer mode, thus spreading the wholesome enjoyment far and wide. And that's our list. What games do you like to play when the world is getting you down? Let us know all about them in the comments below. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon. Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.